Now, a major shakeup is looming at the Communications Authority of Kenya following the government's decision to withdraw an appeal to a High Court ruling that dissolved the board. The move effectively upholds a May 2015 High Court ruling which found the board illegally constituted, paving way for the establishment of a new board for one of Kenya's most central regulators. Former directors are, however, hopeful that a fresh vetting will see most of them come back to the authority. KTN's Abiyagina has more. In a twist of events set to trigger a massive cleanup at the Communications Authority, may have caught many unawares as the new ICT Cabinet Secretary, Joe Musheru, sought to stamp his authority. The Ministry of Information last week announced that they had withdrawn an appeal to a High Court ruling that dissolved the board. Speaking to KTN on phone, the outgoing chairman, Benson Gituku, admits that regulations were flouted. The move effectively upholds a May 2015 High Court ruling which found the board illegally constituted, paving the way for the establishment of a new board for one of Kenya's most central regulators. The CA board has been in the headlines for a while now, having been rocked with legal as well as political battles. The fresh reconstitution of the board is set to take at least two months. The leadership vacuum at the regulator's body could hamper smooth running of the institution's core mandate. The board recently passed its financial budget for 2016. The dissolution of the board on grounds of legality of its constitution now exposes the government and taxpayers to lawsuits from decisions passed by the board in its official capacity. Abiyagina, KTN Business Today. All right, so... Away from that, we'd now like to take, talk about unclaimed financial assets. And uh, according to the CBK, they're holding about 3.3 billion in unclaimed, 3.6 billion actually. Is it 6 billion? 6 billion, right? Yes, according to uh, the chair for the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority, he says it's 6 billion in unclaimed assets that the Central Bank of Kenya is holding at the moment. So you just might lose your money if you do not claim it anytime soon. And KTN's Abiyagina is now going to have that conversation uh, with Vincent Kimosop, who is the chair of the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority. Abi, take it away. Many thanks there, Joy, of course about 6 billion shillings being held by the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority. And this is money that has been actually remitted from other institutions, banks, name it, SACOs, and the list is endless. And there's some good news for you at home and also if you are abroad that you can actually now access these funds after Parliament passed regulations that actually govern these issues that regard unclaimed financial assets. And we want to speak to the immediate former chairman yes. of the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority, Mr. Vincent Kimosop. Thank you for making time. Uh, always a pleasure. How are you? Pretty well. Yeah, great. Of course, good news coming in. Yes. Um, looking at how are people going now to access this money? What are the modalities that have been put in place? Uh, the, the, as you've rightly pointed out, the regulations are really instruments that make uh, the operationalization of the act uh, easier. So, for example, we now have standardized forms for reporting. Mm -hmm. So what that does is because unclaimed assets uh, cuts across all the sectors of the financial system, if you look at our insurance, uh, banking, uh, pension schemes, salaries report, there's been a challenge in the past because of uh, d differences in, in the way they keep their record. So mm -hmm. the first thing that uh, the unclaimed uh, financial assets regulations does is standardizing reporting. The number two is that uh, we now have forms that people can fill in mm -hmm. when they therefore would want to uh, claim what is rightfully theirs. Uh, the other thing that also the f uh, regulation does is that it gives, uh, it's, it gives a buffer to the authority because we have an indemnity form. Mm -hmm. Once you've been given your money as a beginner, you sign an indemnity, uh, indemnity form indemnifying the authority yeah. or absolving it from blame unless you have more assets coming in the future. Then the other thing that we also have is that uh, it, we also have an, a room for people who report multiple types of assets. For example, a bank might be having uh, uh, insurance uh, policies. You've seen banking now, they yeah. have opened up. You also have them having unclaimed 
uh, dividends, they have a fixed deposit. So when they're reporting multiplicity mm -hmm. or different types of assets, we've uh, made that po easier for, for them, uh, for the reporting institutions. And uh, the, the most important thing is therefore, for me in the regulations, is that now we have a form where people who have been, auth who have been proved to be the rightful owners of different assets of the six billion that we are holding mm -hmm. uh, can actually be paid. So if you, if, okay. uh, if you remember when we had the launch last year mm -hmm. uh, in the month of September, one of the things that we had is that we approved people, but we gave them a promise or not that mm -hmm. upon the approval of the regulations, they can actually be paid their money. So for me, that is very important. Then the other thing that happened, uh, Abi, is that, as you're aware, this is the first uh, of its kind in the African continent. Yeah. So we also uh, trailblazing. And uh, f uh, the other thing that for me is very critical is that compliance has been very low. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you're talking, we, the six billion needs not to be celebrated. Compliance has been very low in the insurance sector. Compliance has been very low in the employment sector. People who have unclaimed wages and dividends. Mm -hmm. So we had expect, one of the reasons they've been saying is that we are waiting for regulations because everybody wants to stay with the money. Of course, the regulations yes. have been in the making since about 2011, if I'm not wrong. Um, yes, uh, yes, since but the... But that, yeah. that, that aside, the other issue of concern, of course, is we have almost 1,700 people yes. who have actually applied uh, claiming for the funds. Yes. And uh, it's totaling to about 42 million shillings. Yes. Yeah. So break it down for us. What does it take for someone to actually know how much they have and what's the procedure of accessing it? If you can make it um, in brief. Okay. So the first thing is that they go to www.ufaa.go.ke. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the first step. So then you type in uh, Abi Agina. Mm -hmm. I'm now using you as a possible claimant. You, know, you are also an investor. You cannot be reading news. <laughs> yeah, and then when you type in your name, uh, then you check. The, it will electronically come out because all the, uh, the, of the six billion that we have, all of them has been uh, put electronically. And even the authority won an award for being the most uh, innovative, uh, the most, the best public institution for mm -hmm. innovative use of ICT. So after you type in your name, if you check, for example, Abi, that you have unclaimed assets, what we have done is that we've not been able to put the amounts because of integrity issues. You know, mm -hmm. Abi people can move into uh, some, some of the industries that they can plagiarize somebody's ID. Yeah. So we need to protect your amounts of money. So once you, are, you prove that you have unclaimed assets, so the first thing you do is that you download one of the forms electronically, and then you send in your details. Mm -hmm. That is the, for those who want to claim it electronically, and the process of reunification will start. The authority will do its uh, part, mm -hmm. verify, check if you are the rightful owner, and then from there, then you are paid your money upon uh, approval. You can also walk in manually into the authority uh, as a person. Uh, do, uh, if you have an insurance policy, like those who have unclaimed assets, specifically the owners of policies for the Kenya National Assurance the, uh, scheme, they would walk into the authority because mm -hmm. that the first uh, uh, transfer came from the Kenya National Assurance. So if you, if they do that, then they will be paid uh, their monies. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to check how much money you have, then you have to uh, either call the authority after you've approved because they have uh, a physical uh, and, and they also have numbers and the reunifications department or the manager of unclaimed financial assets line will be able to tell you how much you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but also if you talk to me mm -hmm. as a chairman, Fantastic. the advantage of having <laughs> uh, uh, the platforms, uh -huh. we can establish how much you have. Fantastic. Now there's a challenge, uh, Abby, mm -hmm. from the analysis uh, some of the amounts of money are also small. For example, you have M-Pesa. Yeah. They transferred uh, like one shilling. So you have somebody who has a balance of one shilling. Mm -hmm. So the process of, re of really paying people a shilling is it, it it's more expensive. Yeah, it it's more, so, yeah. those are, so those are gray areas that we are trying to solve in policy. And we will uh, be in consultation with the National Treasury mm -hmm. how to address uh, small claims. Mm -hmm. Because there is no need of spending 500 shillings uh, photocopying the different forms, traveling and everything yeah. uh, to get uh, 200 shillings. How do we deal with that? So mm -hmm. those are small policy areas and we have to grow the law. Yeah. Yes. The other area of concern was that uh, the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority is intending to actually have an account 
that um, they'll be able to hold these funds, if I'm not wrong. They've been lobbying to have an account with the, within the financial institutions. Yes. Um, how far has this gone along and what will be the likely impact of it? Uh, what I'm aware is that uh, currently we, the, the unclaimed financial, the trust fund mm -hmm. is actually with the central bank as an account. Yeah. Uh, the, I am aware that there was a process of how do we move the monies because they, they, you pay the funds from the trust fund. So there are dif uh, different options and one of them was the flotation of the uh, tender on the best provider, uh, the, 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 the most cost effective uh, financial uh, institution that will provide the service of once you've approved that these 10,000 people are the rightful owners, then use different modalities, including uh, having an account uh, with the bank so that the money can be transferred virtually and people can get even these monies on M-Pesa. That's a process that's currently ongoing. Okay. But for the people who have, uh, uh, have confirmed that they are the rightful owners, the, uh, our internal processes cannot wait uh, for you to, to, to for, for, for you have to be paid your money. So those are the in, internal consultations. Okay. It's a new area. Mm -hmm. The areas that uh, we, we are we are very clear on. There are also areas that we're doing more research, more benchmarking on how best to ensure that we pay the rightful person. Because mm -hmm. what happens, you can also get to pay the wrong, the wrong person, person the ghosts. and that also affects the institution, uh. the reputation. As you are aware, Abi, this is a, a, an institution of public trust. Speaking and when about, we lose uh, that, yeah. Speaking about an institution of public trust, yes. um, the uh, UFFA actually estimates that by close of next year, yes. they're targeting to have almost 12 billion shillings yes. in unclaimed uh, assets. Yes. Um, what does this really mean moving forward as we get your closing thoughts on now that we have new regulations, yes. people can be paid, what else can be done to see UFFA be able to rise to be able to actually be benchmarked with other institutions um, on the uh, global stage? Um, first, already we are actually a benchmark mm -hmm. uh, in the African continent. Mm -hmm. I have had an opportunity to, to study the Malaysian and also study the New Zealand. And I can tell you, Malaysia started there in 1965, uh, ours in 2013. Uh, New Zealand, over 100 years. But there are areas we have already overtaken them. So for me, uh, the UFA is already a benchmark and a case study on its own. The number two is that uh, if you look at the history of unclaimed assets across the world, yeah. it is something that will continue growing. So we'd actually expect the fund to grow rather than even as we pay people because uh, we have to address certain causes of unclaimed assets. People don't write wills. Men don't write wills. Yeah. People travel. Yeah. Uh, uh, like when you look at uh, M-Pesa, for example, as an example, mm -hmm. uh, you are not allowed to disclose your PIN to, to another person. Yeah. What happens if people are involved, they die? So yeah. we, if we do not address the inherent causes of unclaimed assets, we would expect the fund to grow. Uh -huh. Yes. Perfect place to end the conversation. Great. Thank you so much. Anytime, sir. Always a pleasure having you. Same here. We've been speaking there to Vincent Kimosop, who is the immediate former chairman of the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority, who is indicating that for the fact that we already have this particular fund, it technically means that we have a problem in the society when it comes to people having unclaimed assets. And it is time for Kenyans and also in East Africa to be more concerned when it comes to issues of ensuring you can account for your money as well as having the issues of your assets being well registered. My name is Abiyagina. I hand you now over to Joy Dorin.